dragon hug is a fun, unique, challenging take on the dragon roll. Now to do this, there's a prerequisite that I've not taught before, so I'd like to go through that first of the high dragon roll, or some people call it the dragon head, and from that it builds naturally into the dragon hug. So the high dragon roll, or the dragon head as some people call it, comes like a normal dragon roll, but the hands come high like this. So what I'm doing here is as I'm going into the dragon roll, I'm lifting both fists above my shoulders and almost trying to get them behind my ears. If I keep my hands too far forward and I do it, the rope's just gonna hit my shoulders like that. So I've really gotta lift my elbows to the sky and get my hands as far back as possible as I do this. And the pattern and the rhythm in the spine is exactly the same as the normal dragon roll. I'm just getting my hands high alongside my ears like that. So practice that, maybe go dragon roll and then high dragon roll. Low dragon roll, high dragon roll. Really lifting those elbows to the sky. And from there then, once you've got that down, and it might take you a good few goes, a few minutes of practicing to really understand that if you haven't done it before. Although it is a common mistake when I teach people dragon roll sometimes, they naturally go high and we have to get it down. This time we're reversing it and we're getting it high. From there then, the dragon hug, all we're gonna do, and I say all, it's, it can be challenging to begin, is we cross the arms at the top. So instead of going either side of the same shoulder, I'm going opposite shoulders. Like that. And it can be helpful to do a normal dragon roll in between, especially in the beginning. We're not trying to do back-to-back -back dragon hugs. When we're doing the dragon hug, you'll notice that one side will always have to go on top of the other. There's no neutrality in this. That'll come with practice. You'll figure out which one. Try both sides. One side will feel easier for you. You can even challenge yourself to learn it on both sides if you want. Now, we develop from there even further. The aim of the dragon hug is to get it as far down our body. So in the beginning, we're above our shoulders, nice and high. And then the real aim is to get it so that the hands are by our waist. Now that's gonna be even more challenging. It takes some real timing. Keys to success with the dragon hug is understanding that it is a very short, fast movement at the right time has to happen. With a dragon roll, we've got long arms reaching out. So there's a lot of time and ability to be smooth with a dragon roll. Because now our hands are really close to our spine, to our core, the moment of, of peak inertia when we have to make the transition from one side to the other, we have to be far more precise. So this is the biggest factor when people do it, is it's gonna hit your leg. It hit my leg for days, maybe weeks of sessions doing the dragon hug before I was able to do it pretty fluidly without it hitting my leg. That's gonna happen as the body learns to become really precise because it is, it's a precise, short, explosive movement from one side to the other, as I say. Because the rope's so close to our core, it has to be. So take your time with it, master the high dragon roll, master the high dragon hug, and then over a few sessions, give it a go, see if you can get the hands a bit lower. You have to really compress across your front and reach around as much as you can. Wish you the best with a dragon hug. Hopefully that's given you something new to play with next time you're out swinging your old piece of rope around. If you want to learn more like that, then consider signing up to my new rope flow course, Fluidity 2, where there's over 30 patterns just like that, spread out over nine weeks, all delivered through our Way the Rope app. If you're interested, then you can sign up in the link down below or from wearetherope.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.